back with another episode of lunch and learn and i'm Brittany, and i'm alex all right alex what do you got for lunch okay guys don't be surprised i have some carrots in this bowl but i do have rice and shredded chicken that i threw in the crock pot earlier this week surprise surprise <laughs> what about you <laughs> um mine is really visually not super appealing today i don't know if i can even hold it up dun, dun, dun. it's a sad song lunch but I am short on fat a little bit. I had a super low fat breakfast that I threw together. But so I have a little sandwich here that has an egg on it, got some shredded cheese, a turkey sausage patty, and I've already eaten one mandarin because I got hungry earlier while we were waiting. And I have a mandarin orange here that I'm going to be snacking on while we are going to talk all about protein. It's a very hot topic. Yes. It seems like we always have questions about protein. So we took, we've got four, one, two, three, four, yep, of our favorite. Well, maybe not our favorite, but our most popular protein questions to dive into. Um, So, Alex, I'm going to hit you with a really hot topic here. Give it to me. Can our bodies only absorb 20 grams of protein at a time? Tell me. Only only 20 grams? Only 20. Only 20? Well, actually, your body will absorb all the food that you consume, no matter if it's 20 grams 40 grams of protein, um, as long as there's no kind of digestive issue. So everything that you do consume, your body is absorbing it. It is going to utilize it in some form or fashion. So don't worry about only consuming um, 20 grams of protein and having to eat six meals or eight meals a day. If that's not your jam, then eat three or four that has 50 grams of protein. That's totally fine. Your body will still absorb it. So you're telling me I can eat that whole steak and I'm going to absorb all of it at once. Yeah, I am. Um, the only way or a good indicator if you're not absorbing it is if you ate something and you went straight to the bathroom and you saw it in the toilet. Nice. <laughs> I know we're eating lunch, but hey, it's the truth. <laughs> good to know. That is a myth. Like, you know, that's another episode I think that we could do sometime is like nutrition myths that we would love to like debunk, you know? Mm-hmm. Hi, hi, kitty. Like, that's another one I think that we can put on the list is like ones that we would love just to like go away. And this one about only being able to absorb X amount of protein. Like, I don't know where it originated, but man, I would love for it to go away. Same. That is one myth I want. I want to disappear. So guys, yeah. You're okay if you're eating a 30 gram protein shake or that whole steak or, you know, whatever it is, you're going to be fine. You're going to absorb it. All right. You ready for your question, Brittany? Hit me. What do you got? All right. So why is my protein goal from my coach more than double the RDA, which RDA means if you're, if you're not familiar, recommended dietary allowances. Yeah, great question. Um, We get this a lot, and especially, I think, with protein more than anything, because um, it's funny, no no one tends to push back with with fat. You know, if we give someone a a fat target and they go, oh, no, that's more than the recommended, you know, allowance for fat. You know, why why do I have this much fat in my diet? Um, Protein, because it's a challenging macro, you have to be intentional with it. It is... um, carbs and fat are pretty easy in the standard American diet to come across, but protein's challenging. Um, Those recommendations, the recommended daily allowances came out, I think, you know, in the forties and I'm not sure the exact date, but you know, the exact year, but in the forties and they were put out as a minimum to prevent negative side effects, to prevent any negative health implications. So when we're working with a client, we're working to help them thrive. We're not working, generally speaking, for a client to prevent negative health implications. So we are looking to get, most of our clients want to succeed in the gym, to build lean muscle mass, to lose body fat. We're not looking just to prevent malnutrition. That's what those recommendations are, to have 
you know, we're, they're looking to have enough protein to prevent malnutrition. Mm -hmm. We're looking to have enough protein to build lean muscle mass, to reach those goals in the gym, lose body fat, all of those things. We need to, one of the best ways to drop body fat is to build lean muscle. Build lean muscle. That increases your metabolism. That then helps you burn more calories at rest. So if you're just eating enough protein to prevent muscle wasting, there's no way you're going to then burn body fat at rest. So that's why you have more protein you know, nearly double a lot of times than what's recommended to prevent muscle wasting. Yeah, I completely agree. We're out here trying to yeah. thrive, not just survive, you know, that whole saying. Um, and I think you are right about it being um, developed in the 40s. And the reason for that was that it was the prime time for drafts. And so men of that age, of drafting age for the war, um, they were showing up really scrawny. They um, weren't consuming enough protein. Um, they weren't able to do all these physical tasks. And so um, the government was like, we need to do something to, to help that out, um, to prevent this from happening. And so that's where the RDA um, appeared, just to make sure that they had enough for good nutrition. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like you said. For the bare yeah. minimums. And we're not we're not out here just trying to reach bare minimums, you know? Yeah. I can and it's I think a lot of it comes from when we get asked these questions and in no way do I want to put this out there like don't ask us the question. We love the question. I think a lot of it just comes from lack of knowledge, like not knowing what that acronym means and not knowing mm -hmm. you think RDA, oh this is what I need. You have no idea that that just means your bare minimum to prevent muscle wasting, you know? So that's why we're here. We're here to educate. So you know yes. what it means. Exactly. I love a pet. I love a pet cameo in the. <laughs> she she is a star out here. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> all right, so all right, yeah. Here's Maybe what I got. The next one. All right, so we know how much, like maybe the bare minimum. We we need to eat more than that. You know, we can mm -hmm. have more than twenty grams of protein at one time. But like, how much protein is too much? Like, you know, our kidneys act as a filter for mm -hmm. urine. Um, and there's this rhetoric that like too much protein can be bad for my kidneys. So is that true? Ooh, this is another myth. We're just out here busting myths. So guys, I want you to let, I want you guys to know, you're hearing it first from here, that too much protein is not bad for your kidneys. All right. Now I have found a article from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that compared various ranges of protein intake through various populations and what they found that if you already have impaired kidney function which you likely know you know through a physical and your doctor has you know spoken to you about this type of thing um, consuming high protein in that state is is not good it's not ideal um, it likely will lead itself to uh, more um, issues but if you are generally healthy you have um, you know, good kidney functioning, you haven't been flagged as, hey, um, your kidneys are, you know, having some issues, then actually consuming a low protein intake will actually increase your risk for all cause mortality. So essentially what that means is consuming very little protein may actually increase your risk of developing diseases later on in life that could have been prevented just through a good healthy diet throughout your life. All right. So if you already have impaired kidney function, which mm -hmm. you likely know, right, um, yeah. then you need to talk to your doctor about how much protein is appropriate for you, but healthy adult, no issues. You need to eat the protein. That's what we're hearing. Absolutely. Hit the nail on the head right there. All right. Okay. So let's, let's get another question guys. Okay. I'm plant-based. This is a question. Not, not me personally. <laughs> I'm a, I like, I like protein. I like animal meat. Um, I'm a plant-based person. I like, I don't necessarily okay. like to eat a lot of, um, animal protein. I follow maybe a vegan diet or mainly plant-based. Okay. Now, do I need to be worried about complete proteins? Okay. So this is a question that we get a lot, um, for anyone who's not familiar with plant-based eating or, um, vegans or even vegetarians. So, 
um, protein is the wide, I'd say vast majority of protein sources, right, come from animal products. Um, protein is comprised of amino acids. There are 12 of them total. Nine of them are essential, meaning we have to eat them. We cannot um, produce them in our body. So there are nine essential amino acids, and um, the only complete amino acids um, come from animal products. So vegans, vegetarians, they need to, to make um, or to consume a complete protein. They need to sort of play a little bit of a puzzle game, right, to mm -hmm. um, sort of put those foods together. Now, we are fortunate enough, you know, living in our part of the world where food for most of us is available, and we don't really need to pay that much attention to say, I'm going to pair food A and food B and food C together with lunch to make this perfect, complete protein. Uh, most of us don't need to do that. Um, so we don't need to stress about those types of things. I would say if someone who is on a plant-based diet, they end up going to the doctor's office and they end up doing some blood work and it comes back that you get some results saying that some of your blood work is low, you have some um, albumin or something like that that shows up low, then maybe we need to look in pairing some foods together and, and we do know what foods have which and um, amino acids in them. We would look at that, but the vast majority of us, you know, plant-based eaters, I say us, I am also not a plant-based eater, but most plant-based eaters do not need to play that game. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes to tracking your food, we sometimes get this question, even if it is not a complete protein, say with collagen, for example, mm -hmm. you still need to track that as a protein, even though it's not a complete protein. Um, it has calories, we track it as protein. Yeah, no problem there. So you don't need to play that game of like, we're going to pair this amino acid with this one to make it complete. We don't need to do that. Um, like I said, in this part of the world, we're fortunate enough to have pretty much everything we need and pair it together. Okay. So what I'm hearing is that as long as you're eating a variety of, say, beans, legumes, vegetables, whole grains in your plant-based diet, then you're likely hitting all your protein needs. Yes, absolutely. And we can even um, drop it in the comments. We have a great resource with all, not with all, but with the majority of plant-based protein products like that you know you can find naturally with all. Mm -hmm. Lots of vegetables are packed with protein that you would not even think. So we can drop that WAG resource in the comments. And yeah, I mean, anyone who is a plant-based eater looking to add more protein to your diet, you can take a look at it. Man, I think that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, let's do that to help a, to help the people out. Yeah, to help the plant people. Yes. All yeah. right. So I think we've covered a lot of really hot topics around protein. So yeah. I think this is it. What do you think? I think so too. I think this covers a big um, chunk of those protein questions. And if you guys have any more or have clarifying questions about anything we covered, don't hesitate to reach out. Drop a comment below. We're happy to re-engage, bring it back up again. And I think we're going to do another one. We already have our topic. We're going to talk about exercise next time. So, ooh, exciting. My favorite. Yeah. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, everyone. If you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to get more content on nutrition, health, and wellness. Thank you for watching.